Well, as TV editor for Variety, Michael Schneider, welcome. Did you mm. enjoy my uh, TiVo impersonation? I was about to say, I enjoyed the TiVo impersonation. It was pretty spot on. Beep, boop, boop. Anyone nice, can do it. Nice. It's really easy. Yes, exactly. So uh, it seems like we've got more genre programming on the air than ever before as networks look to find the next lost or heroes. I know ABC has Life on Mars. So what's that about? How's it look? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's uh, their version of the UK hit that uh, uh, they, they, uh, this is actually the second time they're trying to redo Life on Mars. The first time David E. Kelly was the producer. It didn't work out well. So they're actually, they, they started from the beginning again they got all new actors except for one and uh, they moved it to New York and uh, you know we'll see if it uh, lives up to the original but so far no one's actually seen it because they're still working on it okay so let's so speaking of British remake CBS actually has their own British remake with 11th hour so yeah. what is the word on this I mean we have Rufus Sewell who I actually love and uh, he's reprising Patrick Stewart's character How, how's that gonna turn out yeah you know it's it's got a great time period it's on after CSI and and uh, you know it's, it's sort of the the murder she wrote of this sort of genre where every week it's the eleventh hour, and suddenly we need to save humanity. Um, you know that that sort of premise might wear thin after a while. We'll see. It uh, didn't kind of cut well in the room when we saw it, but we'll see. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to tell after one episode. Absolutely. You know, when it comes to pilots, also the first episode, I always give it a buy. Yeah. And say, well, let's see what it looks like second or third episode. That's when they really get into the writing, and that's when they've been greenlit, and so we get to see how the characters really unfold. So. Uh, which very actually, perceptive of you. Which brings me to the next. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have a keen insight in the obvious, Michael. Yes, yes. Um, good job. So, Bruce. listen. Speaking of that, Knight Rider is going uh, uh, after the the movie surprised everyone by pulling in so many viewers, and the movie was. Um, I don't know, is assy a way to describe well, <laughs> a thing? I don't know. Is, is it really Knight Rider without David Hasselhoff? Can no, we be honest? I don't think so. And these days, everyone's got talking cars via their GPS, so I think there's been something lost in translation. 20 years later, maybe it's not quite as cool or hip as it used to be. And again, without the Hoff, I say turn it off. <laughs> Whoa! You like that? Wow, I did like that a lot, actually. Right. That totally trumps everything I've said so I far. I just made it up on the spot. <laughs> you are a good pretender. Uh, NBC also has a new spy drama with Christian Slater called yeah. My Own Worst Enemy, which uh, that wasn't looks, good at all. looks pretty good, but uh, this is another one of those that they aren't screening for journalists, so are there any hopes for it? Well, you know, I think it's an interesting premise, actually, the idea that it's one man with two different complete lives, and uh, both lives are just beginning to figure out that the other exists. Uh, oh. If, if it plays out, uh, you know, if it's as good as the concept, then they may have something there, so we'll reserve judgment until we actually see something. That was the premise behind Sliding Doors, the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, right? Very, very similar the concepts, the there, actually. Yeah. All right, so yeah. uh, speaking of weirdness, J.J. Abrams, one of the greatest people of all time, Fringe yeah. premiered this past Tuesday. I actually still haven't seen it yet, but how did it do? You know, it, uh, it did so-so. Uh, I think the, the big J.J. fans came out, but uh, the numbers as a whole were kind of disappointing. But uh, next week it, go, it comes on after how so that may help it a little bit and this is another show where I think you, you know it's gonna take a while for them to actually explain what's going on and and it may be a show that's easy to sort of get in week after week because they're promising close-ended storylines as opposed to oh, say, they are. Okay. alias or what have you where if you don't start from the beginning you're lost completely in this case I think you'll be able to tune in halfway through the season and still catch up well let so. me ask you so with a show like fringe do you think that, that that what might be scaring people away is oh my god I just don't know if I can get involved into it you know I can't commit to another show that probably goes nine levels deep I mean, there really is an energy commitment, you know? I mean, I, I'm already, you know, I got my Dexter coming up, I got my Mad Men, I got my Lost. Like, how, what, I, how, how do I have room in my brain for another 10 levels of, of and, story? And, and you're committed to the new 90210, from yeah, what exactly, I understand. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. Well, it's all new 90210, same zip code, different kids. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. yeah, so I think that's the case where now the producers and studios are going back and saying, we got to do more close-ended episodes, because you're right. People uh, sort of, uh, you know, you saw Lost numbers eventually went down, the numbers for Heroes went down down and that's because there's this barrier to entry if you're not watching the entire season then you're not going to show up so I think people are starting to learn from the, those lessons. Well Lost came around but there were those five episodes where it's like take them out of the cages for crap's sake something happened. Exactly um, finally it is. So finally HBO premiered Alan Ball's new vampire series True Blood this past Sunday that one I did see and um, I felt like it could have used some more uh, vampire action in it and I know the premiere didn't get the best reviews and it kind of didn't do great in the ratings so yeah, and what even do you think? That, is even, it people going to come around for it? Even that vampire Vampire porn was kind of creepy. It wasn't like good vampire porn. It was sort of just creepy. So not like that good vampire porn that all the kids are making. <laughs> exactly. You can download it. But uh, you know, I think uh, this is a show that because there's such a huge base of vampire fans out there. You look at Twilight. You look at you know past vampire. You know Buffy the Vampire Slayer, what have you. That uh, you know there's that core audience that may you know keep it going enough that uh, you know the, the show will last for a while. Well, I gotta say it's got my two favorite things: vampires and Hicks. And uh, I don't know. You can go wrong with that uh, delicious uh, kind of. Sandwich right there. 
taste that tastes great together. I got, I got it on my.